What's up everyone? Lance Hedrick here, and today I have one of the most exciting videos that I have made regarding pour overs. So today we're gonna to go over a pour over recipe. I know, I know there are so many of these. People share World Brewers Cup Championship recipes, the Hoffman recipe, the Rayo recipe. There's so many recipes out there. But the reason I am doing this video and why I haven't done a filter video in a while is I've been trying to figure out a way to make a recipe that is kind of a catch all. What I've noticed is none of these recipes currently circulating out there works for everything. None of them do. And the worst ones to replicate are the ones at the competitions. People assume, oh, the world champions use this recipe, therefore it must work. That logic is inherently flawed because the coffees they're using are so incredibly different from what you're getting your hands on at your local roastery or on your subscription plan. The coffees they're using are incredibly soluble from intense processing methods and with varieties that tend to be quite dainty. And so they're able to brew at 16, 17, 18% and they're able to get an incredible array of flavors. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of a lot of those coffees because they tend to taste a little bit on the vinegary side, but they tend to do well at these competitions. So I actually measured the extractions of a few of the comp competitors at Worlds, including some of the top six, and they're extracting pretty consistently at 17 to 18%. Now with the coffees you're brewing at home, that's likely not gonna taste very good to you. So I first wanna just say, those recipes, I would not ever recommend trying those for the most part because they're not gonna do very well for your cup. That doesn't take away from the, the brilliance of the brewer who's competing, it's just they're doing a different thing altogether. So I would not rely on championship recipes in order to proceed. Maybe a few years ago where there was a little bit different, a little bit difference in coffee pre preference with the judges, but in the last couple of years, with the explosion of these crazy processes, it's a lot different on the world stage. Even going with my own recipe that I put right here, one of my first videos back a year ago, I, that one is tailored to lighter roasted coffees and a little nicer grinders that don't produce as many fines. It's to push extraction pretty high for a pour over, but that doesn't work for a lot of coffees and it doesn't work for a lot of you that don't have these types of grinders. And so I've been taking a while to really sit and reflect on what is an approach that would work with the most amount of people, with the most amount of grinders, the most amount of coffees, the most amount of waters, what is it that I can do? So I actually just took an evolution of the one to one I proposed a few months ago, linked right there, and I've decided to work on a few variables that are easily controllable by you, the user at home, in order to make a great cup of coffee without having to throw away a ton of beans trying to dial in your pour over. It should be a lot easier than that. So today I'm going to present to you a catch-all type of brew and I'm excited for you to hear it. Now, before we get into it, and of course you can skip ahead to it if you want, but I think this is important. There are a few things that you are going to have control of that you need to follow. Because again, if you were to replicate everything for me down to grind size, it might not work well for you. So I'm gonna give you the recipe, and then there are a few tweaks that you're gonna need to make for your own flavor preferences. These tweaks will include ratio, water temperature, and then you'll do a little bit with grind size. Now. For the most part, the grind size I'm gonna recommend is going to be constant throughout, but you may wanna tweak it to slow down the flow rate or increase the flow rate by going finer or coarser, respectively. But the big things for you to focus on at home is brew ratio. That means what's the ratio of coffee to water? I tend to do a one to 17, that's for lighter coffees. If you do like a medium coffee, maybe one to 15, one to 16. A darker coffee, maybe one to 14, one to 15. It really depends on the strength you're wanting, how much extraction you're wanting. With a lower ratio, you're gonna have a lower extraction. A higher ratio, you'll have a higher extraction. But on the inverse, lower ratio will be stronger coffee, strength-wise, so the TDS will be higher, and a higher ratio will have a lower strength, so it'll be a little more watery. Even though that's a negative term, doesn't necessarily mean it'll taste like water. Anyway, 
The next variable that you'll control is your water temperature. I max out water temp because I use really lightly roasted coffees. But for medium dark, to medium to dark roast, you're going to want to quickly go down. I would say the lowest you'd want to go is 84, 85 degrees for really dark coffees, maybe up to 90 to 95 for medium coffees, and then above 95 for really lightly roasted coffees. So these are the two variables that are on you. You need to decide what will work best for your situation. Now, the brew is simple. You're going to bloom with three times the weight of your coffee in water. You're going to wait a minute or two minutes for the bloom. If it's a really gassy coffee or if it's a really lightly roasted coffee, I would wait two minutes, and which is what I prefer to do. And then you're going to pour the rest of the water in one pour after that blooming phase. Now, the speed with which you need to pour is around six to eight grams per second. This is easy to test. Just take a kettle and a cup, put some sink water in it, and pour for 10 seconds. And you're going to want to hit 60 to 80 grams in 10 seconds. And just kind of memorize what that flow rate feels like. It's very important to have this style of flow rate because it's going to greatly affect your extraction. You also want the height of your stream to be a the perfect height, which the perfect height would be noted as right after the stream is going to be broken up. So as you're pouring, once that stream begins to break up and splatter on the top of the water, make a splatter noise, you're too high. Get a little closer while maintaining that speed and you're perfect. So you need to pay attention to your flow rate. Most people I see flow way too fast. They're dumping their Bona Vida. They're going all the way till the flow restrictor hits and their fellow. They're taking their time more and they're just going as fast as possible. Do not do that. Six to eight grams a second is perfect. Okay. That's what we're going to want to do with this. And we're going to just do a little quarter size in the middle. Anyway, less talking, more brewing. So I'm going to grind up my coffee, toss it in here, get my kettle, and we are going to go. My coffee's all ground up. So we're going to dump that in there. Bada bing, bada boom. 15 grams on the dot. Now I'm going to take the end of this brush, I just kind of like the shape of it for creating a divot. I'm going to put it into the bed and just rotate around. Now, because we're grinding so coarsely, as you saw in that close up, this, this divot you can be pretty aggressive with because it's not going to compact very much. With finer grind sizes, I wouldn't recommend being as aggressive because it'll compact and make it difficult for that bloom. But for this, we're going to be pretty aggressive. Now, my water was just off the boil, so it's good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and start my timer and I'm going to pour with that flow rate I spoke about earlier. Now I'm pouring in at that flow rate in circles, going back to the center, and we're at 45. I'm going to take a spoon, and I'm just going to kind of excavate in the middle. Now, with this, I have found I've preferred this excavation technique to swirling. And the reason is, is with how coarsely I'm grinding this coffee, swirling doesn't really work that well because there's water running through it. Anyway, while this is sitting here and, and brewing, I'm going to do my Rubik's Cube because we have a two minute bloom I can wait for. And then we'll continue. Boom, 20 seconds to spare, nice. Um, so <clears throat> just sitting here letting it bloom to the two minute mark. I actually like to let the kettle cool down in temperature while it's sitting here. Uh, just, I, I like doing that. If you want to, if you really need to push your extraction, I would put it back on the base. But for this, I'm actually just letting it kind of have a little declining temperature. And then here we go. After that, I'm gonna pour it that six to eight gram flow rate. And I'm just doing a little circle right in the center. All right. I'm going all the way to our weight. So all the way up to 255 in one pour. Then after that, what I'm going to do is it's drawing down is I'm going to watch what is happening in the drawdown. If it's going really slowly, I might just swirl once to level the bed and negate some channels. If it's going pretty quickly, I'm going to intervene with some agitation. Now, because we're grinding so coarsely, what this is going to allow is people with really good grinders, they're gonna have a fast drawdown and they can add agitation at the end in order to affect 
finds migration. Otherwise, if you have a grinder that produces a lot of fines, you're not going to want to do much to it because it's going to be okay as is. So I just did a little wet WDT. I noticed it was drying down pretty quickly. And then I'm going to do just a wee bit of a swirl to flatten and level the bed. Now, as this is going, what's going to happen is it's going to draw down somewhat quickly. If it's going super fast again, just intervene. Take a spoon, take a WDT, take something, and kind of turn the bed over. If it's going really slow, which I imagine the majority of users will have it going pretty slowly, then just kind of let it be after one swirl. But the idea here is we're trying to effectively and quickly extract as much as possible without elongating the contact time and without adding extra pores. One of the biggest issues that people have seen in using some of these famous brews is that with the multiple pores, their grinder is not really good enough to be able to do that because they're producing so many fines. The more pours you do, the more the extraction is going to occur, the more fresh solvent you're putting into the brewer, the more it's going to stall and the more it's going to be bitter. So I don't want to, I don't want to recommend multiple brews. And so this brew right here works with lighter coffees, with darker coffees, with medium coffees, all of it really great as long as you are uh, willing and able to watch the brew and make decisions based off of it. Now as it's drawing down, I like to watch it and ensure that that bed is nice and flat. So at the end even I may do another little swirl. But the idea is it should finish in around four minutes or below, anywhere from three to four minutes honestly, depending on how soluble your coffee is three to four minute brew time. If it's going much longer than that, you're probably intervening too much or your grind size is not coarse enough. Now, normally I don't sit here and harp on time, but I am with this brew. This should be a quicker brew. So if you're doing a two minute bloom, it should be a three to four minute brew. If you're doing a one minute bloom, it should be a two to three minute brew. So that's pretty much it. We do triple the weight of the grounds and water for the bloom, and then we pour the rest of it after one or two minutes of your bloom, depending on how gassy or how light your coffee is. And at the end, we're gonna have roughly a 20 to 21% extraction yield on whatever gross profile coffee you have, depending on the water temperature, et cetera. Anyway, let's go ahead and give this a little tasty taste. I need a cup. We're gonna grab the Aurea Sense cup, and then here we go. Take a little sip of that. Nice. And my V60's dripping everywhere. All right. So good. What this, what this brew allows is for very low bitterness because of the fast brew time and the coarse grounds. When you grind really coarsely, and I'll link an article below for you nerds who want to see what happens when you're grinding a lot finer by Jonathan Gagne, but essentially when you're grinding coarser, there's just inevitably going to be less bitters in the cup. So the issue though is under extraction can occur. So that's why we're trying to push the extraction with the agitation and maybe a little higher water temperature. So going coarse grounds, relying on fines migration to slow down the brew in order to allow for enough contact time to get a proper extraction. And then we're gonna get a nice tactile experience. We're gonna have a good balanced brew. We're gonna have very low bitters, if any. This has very low bitters and it, th there's no stringency on the finish at all. It's got a velvety smooth uh, body and it's high in its citric acidity, has a nice sweetness that it's, that's holding it up on. It's very pillowy on the tongue as well. Anyway, Thanks so much for watching. I want to hear your experience with this in the comments below. Give this a try and start working on some of those variables that you can control, whether it's the water temperature or the ratio. I'm curious to hear your experience. I would love for you to pit this against other recipes you may use. See what you prefer. Don't have a one and done though. Remember, there are two variables you control, ratio and temperature, and both of them have a massive impact on the final cup. But yes, take a look again at that grind size. Use that as your as your dial in point, because it's really difficult in order to really get on the same board with this. This is supposed to be a little faster flow. You want a little coarser grind so that the water goes through more evenly and you can control the channels. Anyway, I look forward to chatting with, with you in the comments and that's about it for today. Hit that like, hit that subscribe and we'll see you next time. Brew something tasty, cheers.